All right, there's a couple of other things to get to. The SEC, slightly, I guess you could say, kind of sneak peek. Kirk Bowles had a tweet, but here is a, the SEC scheduling of games. There's Kirk saying that A&M in Texas would play. It would be during Thanksgiving week, uh, November 30th. That's a Saturday. Of course, the history and tradition has centered around Thanksgiving night and also Black Friday. Here are some games, a sneak peek of the SEC. These are just some of the better games. There's many of them. Non-conference and also SEC. Notre Dame, AM, right out of the bat, August 31st. Tennessee and Oklahoma, they've played before back in the day, September 21st in Norman. Georgia, Alabama, before the end of September will play. Georgia at Texas, three weeks later in Austin. There's that LSU AM rivalry that's been going on forever. Alabama, LSU going on forever. Texas, Arkansas. They played some non-conference games since the Big 12 formed and Arkansas went to the SEC. That's up in Fayetteville. Alabama, Oklahoma at the end of uh, near the end of November. And then there's the one that everybody's been waiting for, Texas and AM on November 30th in College Station. Yeah. Hey, uh, Mike Elko, welcome aboard. You have Notre Dame. LSU and Texas in your first year as the head coach. And that's not to mention anybody else in their schedule who might also be yeah. you know, pretty damn good. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's tough. I mean, the good uh, news is all three of those games are at Kyle Field. Yeah. Look, and, and, and that's to say, look, Alabama and Oklahoma show up on that list a lot too. Like, it's not easy for any of those teams. And it, that, that was the point is that it was supposed to be these are the TV games week in and week out, and that's pretty much a list of what the number one television game is going to be every week throughout the college football season. Yeah, it's really cool to look at, and I know that there's a lot more to fill in as far as the blanks go here. This is just a small sampler of what you can expect, but you see the massive firepower that the SEC gets in return for the additions of Oklahoma and Texas. I mean, Alabama, OU, Texas, Arkansas, Texas, Texas A&M, uh, T Oklahoma, Tennessee, Georgia, Texas. I mean, those are all matchups that didn't exist before this. And they're all, um, in most cases, either a major rivalry renewed or uh, they are massive fantasy style national championship college football playoff type of games. So, yeah, the rich get richer. Um, that schedule uh, looks amazing. Just the, the games one week after the next. And that's just, you know, one game a week that we're seeing right now. So, the influx of all the matchups that you have uh, are going to be awesome for the Southeastern Conference. They're going to be awesome for Texas fans and Oklahoma fans. You know, as much as I know we got a lot of Big 12 people that watch and, and other conferences and, and what have you, um, you look at Oklahoma just getting a little sample of who they get to play and how could you not be excited by that? How could Absolutely. you not feel like you're heading in a much stronger direction with all due respect to who you've been playing? But when you suddenly look up in Tennessee and Alabama – and whoever else is going to end up on that roster when all is said or that schedule when all is said and done, I mean, you got Alabama, and Tennessee coming to Norman. That sure beats you know what you've been used to here lately uh, in terms of you know what the matchups, schools that are more on your par. And as we know, that's what they're looking for. I mean, that's the biggest reason for why they're leaving. They want to make more money and they want to be in bigger games and they want to have bigger opportunities. And they're going to have that in the SEC. So um, it was already easy to see why that move was made. But then you see the schedule, you see the excitement that's been created by just getting a glimpse of it. And yeah, Texas fans and Oklahoma fans are fat and happy right now. And uh, I'm sure very, very excited. And I think if you're Arkansas or Alabama or Georgia, whoever, you know, you look around and now you've got one or both of them on your schedule next year. I mean, that's a hell of a thing to, to be excited about as well. So, yeah, it's going to be an awesome shakeup. And uh, I'm excited to see the full schedule whenever that's ready to go. Okay, Craig, I have a question for you. Sure. September 21st, uh, 10 minutes after that game, if Tennessee wins, how are Oklahoma feel, fans going to feel about Josh Heupel? Uh, about Josh Heupel, uh, they'll still love him for bringing the <laughs> last national championship that they've seen over 20 years ago. Uh, but I think that you know he's a guy that you're always going to have a strong relationship with. Who knows? He might be the Oklahoma head coach one day yeah. down the line. We we don't know, but uh, yeah, I, I think that any losses, like because now the thing will be, well, what happens when Texas loses four games, or what happens when Oklahoma loses in the month of September, and it's a conference game. I think it's going to be an adjustment period, but I think when you're telling yourself you've got all these road trips or all these teams that will be rolling into town, you give yourself that little bit of a window of where, yeah, you might lose a game or two more because now you're playing a different style of schedule. Uh, once you get you know into that, that uh, 
mindset, I think it's going to be an easier pill to swallow. But yeah, like if they look up in year two, three, four, five of this schedule and they're regularly losing four and five games, we need to revisit that conversation. But early on, I think the excitement is going to uh, drown out any of the potential road uh, block or any of the uh, bumps in the road as far as wins and losses go. Because I do think you can chalk that up to an adjustment period. Although neither one's going to be rolling into that conference feeling like they're you know, adjusting much or, or need to given their, their own brands. All right, so there you go. And, man, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you get on the wrong side of some of those, well, you get on the wrong side of those because that doesn't include the rest of the conference schedule. And, in some cases, some of those non-conference schools, the teams that we showed, other than the A&M-Notre Dame game and a couple of 